very sweet, but now try something different. Saw it in the bodega. It's not bad. Coffee check. It's a different series, but why not? All right, today I want to talk about RAM. Now I feel like RAM gets a lot of attention when we're talking about computers, but nowadays nobody really thinks of it as much anymore, at least when it comes to their mobile phones. And the thing is that it's actually doing so much more now in your phone than it ever has. In fact, it's it's enabled features that we use all the time and take for granted, like they wouldn't have been able to happen if it weren't for faster and faster RAM, like night mode, for example. But We'll get into all that in a second. So in this Decoder episode, my tech explainer series here on the channel, I've partnered with Micron, a company that was started in 1978 with four people designing semiconductors in the basement of a Boise, Idaho dental office. And they're now one of the largest memory semiconductor manufacturers in the world. So learn about all the different versions of RAM and what it actually means in real life. Okay, so firstly, we probably need to talk about what RAM is and what kind of RAM is in your phone. So RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and it's called Random Access because data on it can be accessed directly. The term came about because back then you would have had magnetic tape for offline memory that you needed to start the tape at the beginning to read the data sequentially. RAM was able to be accessed quote unquote randomly instead. Maybe it should have been called non-sequential access memory. NSAM, NSAM. Okay, RAM sounds better. Regardless, RAM is what it's called now, and it is used to store any program, the operating system, and data in use right now, allowing it to be reached by the computer's processor easily. Now, RAM is much faster than the normal storage in your device, but it is what's called volatile memory, and that means that all the data that's stored there is erased anytime your device or your phone are turned off. All right, when you look at a phone spec sheet, you might notice another acronym next to the RAM. Usually it's LPDDR and like a number. So for example, LPDDR4, 4X, 5, etc. Now this designation is actually pretty important. So without diving too deep here in this video, let me know in the comments below if you want a deeper dive on this at some point, but that stands for low power double data rate. And there are two parts to that. Double data rate is denoting it's the type of memory that originally when it was invented could receive, well, twice as much data than the current memory at the time. And it did this without using more power. So needless to say, it became the predominant type of memory. You'll actually see DDR RAM in most computers usually. Now Micron actually produced the world's first DDR memory called the Samurai in 1999, which proved it could deliver equivalent performance to the current memory of the time at a much lower cost. And since then, it's become the industry standard for high performance DRAM. Now the other part, the LP part, stands for low power. And that denotes that it's a specific type of DDR memory that is just much more power efficient and less power hungry, hence the low power. And that's obviously super important in smaller mobile devices like your phone. Now, lastly, when looking at the RAM on the spec sheet of a phone, the number after the LP DDR can actually make a big difference. Now, essentially this is the standard for the memory that is overseen by the JEDEC or the Joint Electron Device Engineering Council. They are a group representing over 300 companies that come up with the standards like these and what new features that each new standard must include in order to use that specific designation. And with each version, we've gained new features that allow for better performance and better power efficiency. Now, right now you'll see LP DDR4 LPDDR4X, which is a step above four, and LPDDR5 in flagship phones usually. LPDDR5 compared to LPDDR4X, for example, increased the read-write speed of the memory from 4,266 megabits per second to 6,400 megabits per second, and it uses 20% less power. Now beyond that, Micron actually just launched their LPDDR5X memory, which we'll be seeing in future flagship devices, and that boosts the speed up to 8,533 megabits per second, or 33% faster than LPDDR5, which actually makes it the world's fastest mobile memory, by the way. And while that speed is now a part of the JEDEC spec, the amount of power you use to get to it isn't. So Micron specifically was able to get their memory to that speed while also saving 24% more power over LPDDR5. And that just means that multitasking between apps will improve as well as response times. And you can even move large amounts of data to the AI engines on newer chipsets, which could result in totally new use cases. And for your computational photography, it can do these things faster thanks to those speeds and the lower latency that it has as well. Okay, but what does that mean in the real world? Okay, so when most people think of RAM, I think they think of multitasking. 
So the faster the RAM, the faster the chipset can load apps and processes into the RAM to get worked on, and the faster the job will get done. Also the capacity or the size of the RAM, i.e. how many gigabytes of RAM the device has, also needs to be large enough to house all of the data needed for all of the tasks that you're doing at once. If not, the phone has to close apps and then restart them when you go back to them instead of keeping them active, which means reloading everything all over again. And if it can't close the app, like with some games that might need all of the RAM by themselves when open, it'll be forced to use the much slower and less efficient local storage for this, which results in lagging and juddering. But RAM is actually responsible for a lot more things than just trying to keep as many apps open at once as possible. Using your camera nowadays relies heavily on your RAM more than it ever has. Using Night Mode, for example, to take a photo in low light conditions that comes out bright has to take multiple frames super quickly, all at varying degrees of exposure, and then overlap and combine them all to create a brighter final image. And that takes each of those shots and loads them into RAM during that process and then kicks them back and does all of that within seconds. And now with the predominance of computational photography, even when you take non-night mode photos, it also takes multiple frames all at the same time and combines them to create a much better photo than what the small sensors in our phones would usually be capable of otherwise. And all of that has to go into the RAM and back. So the faster the RAM, the faster that process can happen. If you had slower RAM, you'd be waiting for quite some time. And the same goes for video. 4K 60? Sure, but all of that resolution and all of those frames per second have to go into the RAM. And so you need faster and higher capacity to be able to do that. But also not just upping the resolution and frame rate coming soon with LP DDR 5 x you can do night mode video all the way up to 4K. And Micron has shown that they've even gotten night mode itself to have an up to 50% improvement in resolution over LP DDR5 and shoot speeds up to 35% faster, all while still using less power. Now besides that, even the screen on your phone could use faster RAM. With phones all having higher refresh rates at 90, 120, even 144 hertz, that means that all of the pixels on the screen are loaded 90, 120, or 144 times every second, and that data has to be stored in RAM no matter what is on the screen. So without faster RAM, you couldn't have higher refresh rates, and playing a game at higher refresh rates, even more so. And this is where things start to get even more interesting. The RAM in your device can actually affect a good chunk of your battery life. So, for example, by just having LPDDR5 memory in the phone, with all other specs being equal, not only will the device have faster performance, but you can extend the battery life of the device as a whole. Okay, so yes, the chipset in your phone is super important. It's gonna dictate how fast you can process things. But if the RAM in your phone is not fast enough, then all the things coming from that chipset into the RAM and out won't get done quick enough and your phone will still crawl. Thanks again to Micron for sponsoring this video. Again, they're one of the largest mobile memory and storage manufacturers in the world. So there's probably a pretty good chance that their memory might be in your next flagship phone. But there you guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope we learned something today. Uh, let me know what you guys thought though in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Also though, if you like this video, please subscribe, ding the bell next to the word subscribe so that you can notified when I do new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Horn. Wait for the truck. The truck backing up. Really don't understand why trucks need that sound. Cheat. So just like one, one beep from a backing up truck. He backed up for like four seconds and then he turned around. Truck. Truck. Could receive. <laughs> the sounds of the studio. Even in my own studio, just noises. Getting room tone at the park. After whatever that is goes by. Helicopter, plane, boat. I can't tell, I can't see it. It's too bright out. Oh, it's a seaplane. Yep. Every mode of transportation just happens to be here right now. <sighs> How many doors you gotta close outside? I think they're just opening and closing the door. They are.